Now, do you see her pinning her ears just a little bit there? She's not thinking about you, so you're a little bit of an inconvenience for her if you get in her way. Um, and so just, just keep that in mind. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today is day two with the Mustang Taming here at the Florida Horse Protection Association and we are gonna get started with Lily who was trying to kick everybody yesterday. So we're gonna see if we can get her to not be kicking today. Let's get started. All right, so yesterday she was kicking at people and I, and I actually said this before it even happened and people don't realize this, but when you're working with a wild horse or a, a domesticated horse that's maybe grew up on a ranch and they're not been handled much, they can, they can choose flight or fight. And a lot of people, you know, you mostly see horses doing choosing flight mode, um, but they can go to fight mode. And so that's where Lily was at. So basically, she's more of an introverted horse, more left-brained, and she got stressed being separated by herself. And now she's settled. So I would say she's way less likely to kick right now, but <laughs> I'm gonna go in uh, prepared. Now, what I'm gonna try to do is I'm going to establish some leadership with her because that is very much what matters to this horse. We also observed trying to put another horse with her yesterday so that they could just stay settled overnight until we came back the next day. And she immediately was driving that horse around, going after it, I mean, like, hard. We had to separate them again. Um, it was that bad. And they, they've lived together their whole lives. So this, that was kind of strange, but that just shows you how, how big of a priority it is for her of the dominant side of it. And, and you don't see that a lot, that's why I'm pointing this out. And so I'm gonna go in there and I, before I start working on getting her to be confident with me, I need to establish leadership. How do you do that with horses? You do that by owning space. So first I'm gonna go in there and say, this is my space and you can't drive me from it, which is what she was doing yesterday. Then I'm gonna say, actually, by the way, I can move you out of your space. And that's again, what makes me the alpha. She can go anywhere she wants, just not right there. But once we have that established, then we can continue on with building confidence and the taming side of it. So let's get into it here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna move around here. You can see the ears kind of going back already. And I got two tools with me. I got the flag here because this, if she kind of comes at me with her head, this can be a really obvious flag. If she turns and tries to kick me, I could push her off probably by just using the flag, but I would rather try to touch her with the string, you know, and have her run into a little pressure there. And uh, yeah, again, that's that's horse language 101. She's, tr she's trying to kick, so basically I'm gonna kick back a little bit if if it goes there now there she 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 moved off of me she you know I own my space and now I'm gonna just go do that again so I'm not taking her space right now you see I'm on her bubble you can see her ears coming back a little bit and and she just would rather me not be here right now <clears throat> and again she's been the alpha horse in this herd for a while and I think she's gonna come around pretty good to the taming but she, she has to first see the human as the leader and she just has not, she's only had people feed and not ask her for anything else. And if you think about it, when we feed horses, most of the time we walk up to the fence, we throw food over and then we leave. And if the horse comes up to us with our ear, their ears back and then we leave and they think they drove us off. And this, is, this can be the start of a horse kind of being a bit dominant, okay? So now I'm gonna go own her space. I'm gonna take the flag and I'm gonna push her off that spot. Now you can kind of see uh, Petunia's here in the back, and uh, this is the one that I think is actually gonna be the wildest, so stay tuned, we're gonna, we're gonna work on her this afternoon. So now I'm gonna go own Lily's space again, I'm gonna walk her across the pen. Now here's what's interesting, you might think because I'm pushing her off this spot that she, she might become more afraid of me, but actually this looks like leadership to a horse. And I can actually play a game where whenever, as long as I do this, whenever she's looking out, she'll start to look in towards me with a better uh, expression. See that right there? She got a little bit curious about me. So basically, I'm just doing what Lily was doing to all the other horses yesterday, just saying, actually, I'm in charge here. Good, I like that. She moved out of there with a little bit of hustle. And again, notice, I'm not chasing her. Ooh, there, you guys see her looking back at me right there? Very good, so now I'll kind of walk away. So this is a, this is, there's levels of this conversation that I'm having with her. This is not just about me showing her who's boss and pushing her around the pen. I'm owning her space, but I'm doing it in a way that's actually pretty palatable to her. So now what I'm gonna do is now I would like to approach her and I'm gonna change my strategy here. 
because she, she really hasn't given me any resistance to owning space. That's why I tried it three or four times. I had no resistance. I'm not going to keep doing that. We're going to move on. So what I'm going to do is kind of work alternating sides here, back and forth. And, you know, a predatory way to approach a horse is to walk on a straight line to them. And so you see me as I'm working with these Mustangs a lot, I'm going side to side a bunch. Now here again, if she leaves, I'm gonna let her leave all the way, meaning she kind of disconnected from me. Hell, now she's kind of thinking back over here. Hey girl. So now I'm gonna to walk to the side again. So she's turned away, so now I'm gonna keep the pressure on until she stops, so now it's a new game. Now she got tagged, because I don't know if you saw her hip kind of came towards me, and she thought about uh, kicking. But now I'd like to release her facing me. She has a habit of turning that butt towards us, so I'm gonna keep the pressure on her here until she looks at me. So it's like, whatever you release the horse on is where they're getting relief. Okay, I wanna get her to think in right there. Now I'll take that pressure away. Very good, and you hear her blowing out, having a big release. So now I'll start my approach again. So I'm gonna move laterally here. If she thinks about leaving, I'm gonna step into her a little bit stronger, a little more direct line. So I kind of change my intention a little bit. Pressure's on here, pressure's on. I want her to relax and think in right there. Take the pressure away. So I'm releasing her on a bit of a position, but also a mental state. And that's very important. You can see she just looks a little more settled. You saw before she was in a little more of a worried state of mind. And that's when the pressure stayed on. And that's what's hard for a lot of people to see is that you, if you release the horse when they get worried, you're just teaching them that getting worried equals relief. And basically this is what all about Mustang taming is, is teaching them to resist those those natural those instincts that are natural to a horse to, for survival um, and this is why it's a it's kind of an amazing experience that they're even it's even possible for them to do this oh good so she's starting to get the hang of that standstill now okay she tolerated me being in a little bit closer again so now I'll take the pressure away So this horse has been one of the most friendly in terms of being able to let us pet her and that sort of thing but while we were feeding her, when it was on her terms. But now that we're asking her to do this on our terms, it's been a different story, you know. What a lot of people don't realize is when the horse sees you as the leader, they start to rely on you for confidence uh, in terms of the surroundings. So if the leader isn't afraid, they shouldn't be afraid. But if they're still seeing themselves as the leader, then that means they're still relying on themselves to account for danger when danger comes up. There we go. Good girl. Good girl. That's the lily we know and love <laughs> coming back out. So we prove to the horses that we are worthy leaders by not... Um, pushing them through their own thresholds by always giving them room to make choices, but also by finding ways that we can ask them to yield their feet to us. And that combination of things is the recipe for building a horse's confidence and trust in us. Oh, now she's offering, offering a little bit more. What a girl. Oh, now you like them scratches. She's like, okay, you can pet me here. <laughs> I accept. I still don't trust her totally, though. <laughs> How about this side? Can I touch you on this side? Face? No. No face. So you can see, it's like human nature is that we all love to pet their faces. Uh, but you can see that she's not, she's not a big fan of, of the face. Okay. Good deal. So now I'm going to put a rope on her. Part of the idea of becoming a good horseman is... Um, getting handy and being able to um, put a rope on them from a distance if you have to. I'm gonna we'll give this a try here. A 
Ooh, now you see she gave that right away. She might have a little more handling than some of the others. Now, it's possible she's just gentle, too, you know, and like, but there is a chance somebody did some handling with this one if she's going to give to pressure that easily. We'll see if it continues or not. Uh, no, probably not. So I just need that nose to look at me. Now, again, normally when you're teaching a horse to give to steady pressure, you would just hold and wait uh, there. But in this, with this setup with Mustangs, you have to do little tugs. I find that they get too bound up if you just put just steady pressure on and just hold and wait. So I was hoping she maybe had this process done or with her already, but unfortunately, it's unlikely. Good. Just kind of practicing walking back and forth, and it's gonna it's gonna be a combination of practicing getting her to yield, and then being able to walk up and pet her. Just like what we accomplished yesterday. But I'm really glad she decided not to kick at us today. I don't love that angle. I still don't totally trust her. They have to turn loose to this idea that now they can't just leave whenever they want to. And that's this is one of the hardest parts for these horses because they're fairly comfortable being around people as far as wild horses go. But they're not they're not used to at all the idea that a human can control where they're moving their feet to because that's never been asked of them. And they're all a little bit older. You know, I think they're all in at least their mid-teens, if not in their early 20s. And so that's a long time, you know, to be able to do whatever you want. And then all of a sudden somebody comes in and starts bossing you around a little bit. I think Lily's about ready for a, for a halter. So basically I, will, I want to put a halter on them as soon as possible. The lariat rope has its place initially but it's the, 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 this is a lot harder for them to choose to yield to than this once they get uh, comfortable. The trouble is it's really hard to get a halter on them until you can touch them all over. And uh, luckily Lily has, is more gentle in terms of being confident with people. And so hopefully this will allow me to get a halter on. I still gotta be careful being around her though because she's so left brain that if she does something, you know, if there's something we're doing that she doesn't like, instead of running away from it, she's she's going to be fairly inclined to to bite at us and you know what we don't you know it's just the start of that habit but we don't want to we definitely don't want to make it um make it worse so what i'm going to do is go ahead and just drop this That's a good girl. So normally I would use a longer rope than this, but her flight zone is so short that I think it's fine. What you wouldn't want to have is where the rope is so short that they go to pull away that you lose connection with them, you know, and then they pull a the rope out of your hands. But I, I just don't think that's going to be an issue with her. So again, just because we got a halter doesn't mean she knows how to lead. <laughs> and what's interesting too, um, and I think this is a really beneficial step for them, or maybe one of the most important steps actually, is a lot of like weanling horses that, pe that are raised in people's barnyards. You know, we feed them and handle them a lot and they get pretty confident with people and they learn to follow us. And then it kind of looks like they know how to lead, but there's a difference between a horse like this that doesn't know to follow yet, but is learning to give to that halter. She'll understand following a feel at a more deep level than a horse that um, was just kind of following people. And so what I do is I just kind of circle those hindquarters until the front feet take a step like that. Just little tugs here again. I'm, I'm avoiding just pulling directly on it because I think that puts them in a little too much of a bind. Eventually we can do that, but for right now, just these little tugs. 
just kind of keeps them usually this side of, of having those, those kind of big reaction moments. <laughs> There you go. See how she really doesn't want to move those hind feet. She's doing everything she can to avoid that. Because that means they're, in their mind, they're putting themselves in a more defensive position. Um, a more vulnerable position, I should say, if they yield those hindquarters. So that's what I was looking for there. Once you can get those hindquarters to move freely, then you want to start getting the front feet and them following you. And these two don't need to follow a ton. Um, those two will need to follow us a lot to help build confidence. So we'll do a lot of walking away from them. Um, these two just need some yields and then some, some pets. And uh, once they get good with this, then we can actually start driving them a bit. So, well, Emily, why don't you come in here with her? Okay, so we are working with uh, Petunia. I keep wanting to call her Penelope, Petunia. And I believe she might be one of the more difficult ones. Uh, the reason I think that is I visited here a couple times when we were getting ready to do this. And she would always be this one that's standing offish, not the one coming up to kind of say hi and visit. And yesterday, um, we fed the horses in their normal pen, and we had a gate that was just a little different, and she was the one that wouldn't go through there. And so we had to wait until the afternoon, and then the, the staff here got her, got her penned up in this pen, so that was really good. But she's been the most standoffish, and so I'm having a feeling that she's going to be a little difficult. But we'll see what we get. She also could just be... Now she kind of pinned her ears at me there, and so she made me a little nervous <laughs> after Lily, Lily attacking the other day. So there's there's basically two games that I'm playing. One game is trying to kind of desensitize her to things being in her bubble, just to where she would not not be worried about that, or teaching her that if she gets bothered, she can find relief by facing me, and I'll leave. So those are kind of the two goals that I have. So I'll kind of take what I can get. So I'm very aware of the distance that I am from her and the distance that my stick is from her. So what I'll do is I'll work the stick in the air a little bit over them, and then I'll put that away, and then I'll just get a little closer. <laughs> and you kind of alternate one or the other. You really, what doesn't work very well is if you step in with both like that. That usually is a way to kind of set them off. Now that I've been in here a minute, I might try to get her to look at me with a nice expression, right? Almost there. There, her expression got, I'm just looking for moments where mentally they're not so defensive, and that's when I what I retreat on. But yeah, I kind of like where this is going with her. She's, she's moving away from me, but she's kind of getting okay with me, me being around her. I'm trying to always, I'm, I'm trying to not like corner her here. Ideally, we'd be in a round pen, um, but I like that she's, she's getting better with these steps. But I'm trying to give her a room to leave. If she wants to leave, you want to let them leave. That's another mistake people make. Even though we're using control with the halter layer rope, I want the horse to feel like if I'm approaching them to build confidence, if they need to leave, they need to feel like they can leave. Don't try to stop them. I might stop them over there after they left, but I'm not going to try to stop them initially because if you do that, that will make them feel even more claustrophobic. They have to trust you that they can leave if they want to. And that's a, a good tip for trailer loading as well. If a horse decides to back off, it's like let them back off and then fix it, not try to prevent them from backing off. What a champ. You got a rope. There's no time like the present, I guess. There we go. Whoa. A horse is interesting because I can kind of touch her all over her body, but not her head yet. And that's the part I need to get to to put a halter on. 
And so you gotta just dig what you can get, even though my focus is on being able to rubber face to put a halter on, you know, we're just, we gotta just work our way there one piece at a time. I'm really happy when I get to this step because now I can take the rope off anytime I want. So it's other it's an interesting thing is she's not that worried about stuff. Like the rope touching her now is like, or this halter is like okay for her. So I switched out the lead rope uh, with this horse and so now we can operate off the halter. And the main thing I'm looking to accomplish with her is, uh, is following a feel. Now, there was a little situation that happened when I was switching the lariat rope. This horse got really uncomfortable with pressure being around her nose and that feeling of, of tipping her nose. And so she kind of kind of reared up and scooted over there and, and then I stopped her and, and that's kind of where we're picking up from here. But the main thing that I'm trying to do is I want to start teaching her to, to walk forward. And um, her feet have been pretty sticky. Like we, this will take a step or two and then we kind of get stuck. Oh, there we go. So what you're seeing here is the halter pressure is a little more palatable to them than the lariat rope. It, you know, the lariat rope tightens on them and that makes them more defensive. And we, we, it's a necessary thing to start with, but as soon as we can, we wanna to get to this halter. So I believe she understands following a feel now, but I don't think she really wants to follow the human. And so we're gonna work on following the human. Still need to get her to lead out a little bit more, but for our first day with her here, this is pretty pretty good progress. Good. We definitely need to get her really friendly around her head. That's kind of why I'm working this a little bit here, uh, because this is where we got to put the halter on each day. So we got to tame that area. Good, I like her head coming down there, getting relaxed. So what I'm doing now is I'm just practicing putting that halter on because that's one of the hardest steps and I'd really like to not have to use the lariat rope after today if it's possible. Um, but I really don't wanna leave halters on them because there's a risk of them catching it on the fence somewhere. So you can see, so I'm just going through the steps that I would do um, tomorrow, I'd walk up to her, you know, you know, of course I'd do some of the other stuff too, but this is one of the steps that we got to get to. And then I'll have her follow me again. There we go. <laughs> Girl. Doing so good at that. Crazy, huh? All in all, we had a really successful day. If you look over here, Tyler can pet all over uh, Petunia. And uh, we got her prepared with the halter. She's following a feel, stepping forward. Um, Rose is playing hard to get right now. <laughs> or Lily. Spank her, Emily. There you go. And uh, so yeah, we're still, there's still more work to do. So tune in for next time and uh, we'll see, we'll show you guys where we finished up with Lily and see if she's still kicking at people or not. <laughs> so folks now have got a chance to see the horses and um, it's, I, I hope other people appreciate what you guys are willing to do to help these horses. Um, you know, you guys are, are taking care of so many horses here and doing great things down here in Florida. Um, if people that are watching this video would like to help support what you guys are doing, how can they do that? Thank you for asking. They could go to our website, which is at www.hpaf.org, and they could go to our homepage and click on the Donate Now button. The donations help us not only pay for the feed and the hay and the farrier care and the veterinary bills, but they also help us pay for the training of these horses, which, as you know, is critical to their success in life. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great thing to see that a rescue is not only taking care of the horses physically, but also 
when we invest um, into develop the training the horses, that makes them more desirable, where they no longer need to be in a, a rescue situation, and they can they can have a future absolutely. instead of just a past. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So hopefully you guys are, are willing to get on board with this and uh, go and donate. We'll leave a link in the description below, and uh, we appreciate all your support. Mm-hmm.